Hi, welcome to Unplugged with Araldo. It's so glad to have you with us. We have a great show lined up for you from actor Kazi Togunas, who recently appeared on Equalizer 2 with Denzel Washington to advice on how to have a health and wellness on a budget to tips on how to throw a stress-free holiday party. We have a lot to cover, so let's get right to it. Joining me is rising actor star Casey Togunas, who has appeared on the TV series Blind Spot and Blue Bloods, to name just a few shows, and has been in hit films such as John Wick and The Broken Tower. Please help me welcome Kazi Togunas. Hi, Kazi. How are you, man? Good. How you doing? How's it going? Yeah, it's going great. I can't Thank believe you're here, man. I really am. <laughs> I've read so much about you, and it's very interesting. But um, and, and your background is interesting as well, too, and we'll touch that upon. But tell us a little bit about who you are and what made you go into the acting. Oh, wow. So, you know, I'm primarily, I, I like to say that I'm a creative. Okay. Uh, I'm not just an actor, but, you know, I, I, I write, I produce, I, I've directed. Right. Um, what, really, what really happened in my life to, to, to kind of make me come to the realization that I wanted to be a creative. Right. I used to own a 24-hour diner in Newark, Delaware. Wow. Really close by, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, when that must have been something. <laughs> it was. It was an experience. I was in my. Is I was in my twenties running wow. a twenty-four hour place, and uh, it was an adventure. And when that adventure came to an unfortunate, unfortunate end, end. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it brought me to a fork in the road where right. I had to really be real with myself as to what I wanted to do. Right. And I had that conversation, and mm -hmm. the, the little voice on my shoulder was like. Being be an actor. <laughs> so we went back to school in January 2009. I enrolled in the New York Film Academy. And but that before it. that, though, I, I have to say, you, you, you tried figure skating? <laughs> tell, tell people a little about the figure skating, because yeah. I, I was like, wow, figure skating. How, then you obviously get into boxing and all that, but yeah. figure skating, why figure skating? So when I, when I was young, my, my parents, growing up in Chicago, wanted me to play all the sports. Okay. And uh, every season, I would go from, you know, we'd go baseball, we'd go soccer, we'd right, go basketball, right. winter would come around. The sports and we would, that everybody plays, Right, right. right. We, they wanted me to learn how to skate. Mm -hmm. And as I got older, I just really fell in love with it. And it became my sport of choice through, you know, middle school and high school right. and even into college where I attended the University of Delaware. Okay. And I really, you know, now coming from, you know, this entertainment background, I realized sure. that it was really the performance aspect of skating uh -huh. that I really enjoyed. But I always had this other voice on my other shoulder that was like, you really should you learn how to box. On your yeah, yeah, yeah that, you know, <laughs> you got to listen. You got to listen to these yeah. voices. Right? <laughs> so the, uh, the boxing thing was kind of, it, it, as I got older, I just, real, I just I really loved the sport and I really right. wanted to learn how to do it. And when I kind of came to an end with, with figure skating, sure. and I just really, there was only a couple of months where I segued into to boxing. boxing right? And... Both sports, I learned so much. Time management. Of course. Um, you know, uh, it teaches you more than just the sport, right? It, there's a lot of other things. Yes, yes. But I wanna, let me touch up, and I, I'd be remiss if I don't touch upon Denzel Washington. Please tell us how was it working with Denzel Washington. Well, any time that you work with a legend, of course. It's, it's, um, it's the initial shock value first. Oh, my God. Because yeah. you see someone that you've grown up watching, uh -huh. and you're, you have to like kind of keep the bravado of like, I'm not starstruck right now. <laughs> right. And just be like, well, I'm business, we're good, we're good, let's do it. But uh, he's so intense and focused that, you know, that, that moment of wow. being starstruck is, is a fleeting moment, it's just gone, and you just get right into the work. Like, and uh, and he is, he's so good at what he does. He's so intense, right? Yes, yes, and, and it forces you to bring your A game as an actor, and I, I love that. And of course, I, that's what that's what that. we're, you know acting requires, right? To bring your a your a game every single time, right? One hundred percent. And I'm sure Denzel brought it right out of you, right? Absolutely. And Antoine Fuqua, the director, right? He's he's uh, he's an actor's director. That's right. And he really really loves to see what actors can bring to the role. Of and, course. And between the two of them having you know the the, the intensity and the focus and and the freedom right. to be able to create with Antoine's directing style, sure. I just I just. It was it was one of those projects. Where it was literally like a, being like on set was a dream and, come true. And you true. played the villain, right, in the Equalizer? I, I played one of a uh, team of four. There was okay. a, four four primary antagonists in the film, and I, I play Ari. Okay. And Ari is a is a former government operative turned um, private. Okay. Who who used to work with Robert McCall, and you know playing playing a guy like that, 
I really I like to think of villains as they're people too. Of course. Right. So everyone a has demented, but right. they're people too, though, right? right? <laughs> but everyone has a different motivation. True. So so the the thing is like when you're playing a villain, I don't think of myself as like oh I'm I'm being this bad guy. Right. 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 No, I'm doing a guy. Who, I'm I'm do, I'm a playing a guy who does things that other people are not willing to do. Okay. For for money and right. for me the biggest challenge playing Ari was really the the physicality, the learning how to use automatic weapons right, and right, right, you know of all of all of the very technical things that you need to do to learn how to portray a professional killer right. well on screen and right. I really drilled with like stunt team to like get that that was really important That's to me that, important, right, that, that, that I moved properly and yeah. Um, Let's talk about Standing Eight because I want to sure. get this in. Sure. Tell me a little bit about Standing Eight. Okay, uh, Standing Eight is a film, an award-winning film, Correct. short film that I wrote about a boxer who gets diagnosed with systemic lupus. Okay. Uh, the the film played at 28 festivals worldwide. Mm -hmm. We've taken home numerous awards. Right. Uh, my motivation behind the project. Please tell me about the motivation. Yeah, yeah was uh, my mother has systemic lupus. Okay. And. I also had never played a boxer to that time. So okay. it, it became a thing where I wanted to take two aspects of my life to make like a project that was going to be worthwhile. Right. And I couldn't think of anything else that was important to my life as, as raising lupus awareness right. to kind of help this audience that really has never so been catered to. So this movie is dedicated basically to your mom, right? It's absolutely, and all, all of the people whose lives are affected to, by lupus. Right, you which know? is a terrible, terrible disease. Yeah, if, if, you're, if your audience doesn't know, it's an autoimmune disease Correct. where the body's immune system attacks healthy organ and tissue. Right. Kazi, thank you so much for being here. It was a pleasure. Yeah, yeah. Good luck to you. All right, and come back you. again. Yeah, for sure. All right. Thank you. Okay, guys, still to come. Do you struggle like most Americans trying to figure out how you can have health and wellness on a budget? We all know that health is your best investment. So my next guest is going to give us advice on how to invest wisely. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Each day we read more and more about the importance of achieving our optimal health and well-being naturally. Joining me is Gina DiOrio to discuss a holistic model. Holistic model, right? Yes, yes. How are you, Gina? I'm doing fantastic, and thank you very much for having me on the show. Oh, here. it's a pleasure to have you on. Thank really. you. So, before we get into what you actually do, mm -hmm. tell me a little bit about yourself and why you decided to go to the uh, holistic uh, health. Well, aspect. I've been doing this since I was 15 years old. Okay. And I'm proud to say I am going to be 52 next month. God bless. Thank you. Look fantastic. I feel fantastic. <laughs> you look fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> and I was following the holistic model of uh, body, mind, and spirits okay. many years ago and uh, found it a wonderful, rewarding experience to be in charge of our own health. Mm -hmm. And uh, gone into the area for uh, biology at Stockton University, found that model. Stockton, yes. Yes, you're in Austria yeah, as well. Yeah, right. Got it, yes. Yeah. So I'm sorry. Go ahead. And they were offering classes in holistic health and I'm okay. saying oh my gosh the world now is finally catching up to me right and doing this holistic uh, model so I'm actually doing that now as a clinical nutritionist and following that um, model model so to, for our viewers tell mm -hmm. us what a clinical nutritionist is good question uh, what it is is that you have an area that we do uh, health and well-being okay following food first as our nutrition our foundation for this optimal health okay followed with vitamins and supplements and we want to follow a whole um, based uh, food um, industry okay. where we're having non-gmo foods right. uh, incorporating our um, liquid intake which mm -hmm. is our water and then following a holistic uh, lifestyle incorporating the environmental areas right. uh, as well as going into the aspects of environmental within the body as well as outside the body so we want to make sure that's optimal okay. and then we uh, classify our, uh, our clients into an area where something that could be high risk or toxic right. to the environment right. we take that out and incorporate a healthy lifestyle uh, modification so you to do that. consultation with your clients absolutely then, right? sure sure so you design a specific program for them yes according to their health goals because everybody's living a different type of lifestyle right, right. everybody has different health goals and Mm -hmm. mind so bear in mind that I take them as an individual okay. and incorporate their health goals of what they want to do mm -hmm. sit down with them in a consultation when they visit my website you'll see a blueprint right. of their uh, a questionnaire mm -hmm. uh, very very well uh, in depth about their blueprint of their life what are they doing now right health wise what right. conditions like do they have test, basically asking them all kinds of questions what they do now right exactly and then I find out what their lifestyle is if they're under any type of stress 
Right, um, which we all are, so it's Exactly, right. exactly. So what I actually do is follow that model and then take out those areas that could be high, highly right. toxic or right. negative right. and incorporate a healthy lifestyle into that area. Perfect. So mm -hmm. I know you brought some products here. I did, so yes. So let's, let's talk about these products you brought here. You okay. can maybe start over here and then work your way to the Absolutely. left. Absolutely. So what we do is health and wellness is on a budget. Okay. Uh, I, actually, anybody can get healthy. Okay. Uh, and we can, I incorporate simple aspects of their life mm -hmm. and I introduce two areas here okay. first. Sprouting. Which Brian. is wonderful. It's very, it's pennies on the dollars. It's okay. very, very economical that anybody can do. Mm -hmm. uh, children love it because it could be a science project for themselves. Okay. And then going into the area of uh, sprouting, what we do is we incorporate different foods uh, okay. according to what your desired goals are. Now, is this like a drink you do something? You mix something? How, how does no, this work? No, this is actually growing. So what happens is you find, uh, purchase a uh, sprouting apparatus. Okay. And you can find that at your uh, local health food store. All right. And then what happens is, depending Depending on what type of beans you want to uh, sprout or mm -hmm. seeds, okay. you can do so. And it takes anywhere from uh, three to five days okay. uh, to sprout. And what I brought with me are some of the uh, beans here. This mm -hmm. is the uh, mung beans, which is very good for protein. So if anybody is looking for a nice high protein. All right, so protein deficient, this yes. would be the right one. Yes. Okay. And then the other one is broccoli sprouts. Okay. Uh, so I brought the uh, apparatus here right. to show. And what happens is, is that you can just um, do this right at home. It takes, again, anywhere from from three to five days, and okay. what happens is that we um, use just water, right. citric acid, in order to prevent any type of molding. Okay. And then what happens is we let the uh, seeds germinate for 24 hours. Okay. And then we rinse them out anywhere from uh, the directions of what the uh, right. beans are calling for. All right. And so, what do you have over here? Over here is something that I've been using for the past three years. It's Edie's Naturals. Okay. And this is something about uh, holistic health as well. This is the environmental factor. Mm -hmm. So here we have um, our inside factor to keep our body healthy by sprouting and then we have our outside factor for keeping our body nourished. Okay, so you so, have like creams here, these are drops I imagine? Or? Yes, yes, serums. Um, we also have uh, a, a body scrub as well as a body butter. And mm -hmm. what's happening is, is a lot of people that are um, using their uh, daily healthcare products okay. may be uh, not aware that they can have some toxic chemicals in them. Okay. So we don't want to have that. So this is all organic, mm -hmm. highly efficient. And these are on where can you get these products? Oh, at, at edies.com, okay. uh, ediesnaturals.com. Okay. And also, it's great for the holidays. And what we can okay. uh, shop now is uh, $10, 10 10 percent off. Okay. When they mention your name. <laughs> oh, oh, excellent. Yes, oh, yes. Really? So when they mention Araldo, <laughs> right. when they go to their uh, the website, they can actually uh, at their shopping cart mm -hmm. take ten percent off when they use the wow. promo code Araldo. And you have a website, your own website, right? What My is that? own website uh, is www.holisticandsolutions.com. Okay. And you can. Follow me on Instagram as well under Holistic and Solutions. Right. And I'll be more than happy to uh, talk and to you about your health. People can reach out to you there, right? Absolutely. And my telephone number is also 609-556-3741. Okay. Perfect. Gina, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, no Appreciate problem. it. No problem. Thank you. Take care. Okay, guys, still ahead. We have a great topic, how to raise feminist girls and, yes, boys. Stick around. We'll be right back. Welcome back. I'm joined via Skype from Los Angeles with Devin Handy. Devin is a feminist podcaster and founder of Hellbent Media. She's here to talk about raising feminist girls and boys. Plus, we are going to discuss the surge of more women running for office. Happy to have you, Devin. How are you? I'm great. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, it's my pleasure. So let's start right off with Hellbent Podcast. How, when did yeah. you start it and what was the idea behind it? So we started in... 2017, so right after Trump was elected president, and we realized that there was really a lack of female and minority voices in politics, particularly the sort of political punditry that you see. Okay. So we really wanted to create a space where we elevate women's voices, people of color's voices, LGBT community voices, and create a space where we could, you know, really create a, a more intersectional feminist perspective on the news. Okay, so you've been on for on the air for about a year or so, right? About uh, two years. We started about the beginning. Two years. Of how Virginia. how has it changed since the beginning? Well, you know, we really didn't know what we were doing when we started. <laughs> right. <yeah. laughs> we we literally bought two microphones and some space on the internet, and then just started talking. 
and we weren't really sure what we were going to do with it. And what it's really become is a community mm -hmm. of people mm -hmm. who really felt that their voices were lacking. And so we have a very active Facebook group, a very active community on Twitter where we all talk and we share stories. And it's really become more about creating this space and creating a, a, an outlet where we can use our, our platform to cover the stories that aren't getting covered elsewhere. How yeah. difficult is it for a woman these days to start a media company? Well, it, <laughs> I mean, a lot of it is is people just don't expect you to do it. Okay. And, you know, you really have to not take no for an answer right. and really push to be part of the conversation. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I like to say that podcasting is a democratization of media. Okay. There's no real gatekeeper or barrier to entry in theory, but there are still definitely like there there have become there media companies have been created and a lot of them are owned and operated by men and okay. other groups that traditionally run the media. And so it's just been an exercise in pushing forward, not taking no, and um, really, you know, sometimes you have to yell to be heard. <laughs> <laughs> right, I understand, yeah. So I just, you, have, you have a daughter, correct? I have a son. I have you have a son. How difficult is it to, to, to teach somebody the feminist movement that's currently going on right now in the country? It's actually way more difficult than I think I even anticipated. Right. <laughs> I mean, a really a good example is the the school. My son goes to preschool, and the school that he goes to is very progressive. We, we live in a very liberal area. Right. We live in a very wealthy area, and um, I remember last year for for you know every year for Mother's Day they do like a Mother's Day party at the school and they, they right. gate it. So some people go at 10, some people go at 1030, some people go at 11. Right. Um, and then they do a Father's Day party as well. And the Father's Day party, they sent out an email that said, OK, well, we're going to do all the fathers first thing in the morning because daddies have to get to work. Right. right. And so there's just this base assumption that that women have more time or that women are more able to make these sort of things. And they're really concerned about dad's schedules, but less concerned about mom's schedule. And it's just that culture that we don't realize really does rub off on our kids, especially right. at that age. And they, you know, maybe they don't understand exactly what you're saying, but they remember right. that. And it, it's so difficult to break some of those norms. Again, even in these areas where, you know, like I said, very liberal areas, right. very informed parents. And, and it's just so ingrained in our culture that I get an email like that in 2018. Right. Um, so it, that's really been very interesting in raising a child. Another example is my my son and I, we, we painted our nails. Right, right. And we went to, uh, he went to school and he came home and he said, Mommy, this, this girl in my class told me that nail polish is only for girls. Hmm. And, hmm. you know, and I said, well, obviously not because you're wearing nail polish and you're a boy. So. Right, right. Um, <laughs> but, I mean, again, these 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 ideas are so deeply ingrained so early with our right. kids. Okay. And it, it can be really hard to break that. Just as a parent, it's hard to even know where to start with that. Sure. Um, and you don't have control necessarily. Right. Like I don't have control over what kids at school tell my son. They can tell him that nail polish isn't right. for boys. And maybe that sticks with him, maybe it doesn't. Right. And, and that's just one very small example. Of course, of course. Um, I, yeah, I also find in preschools, it's very interesting with little girls especially, the mm -hmm. way that little girls and little boys are treated, even in preschool, is very right. different. Right. And I think one thing that we can all do right now, especially for raising feminist daughters, right. is really put stock and a value in when little girls say no. So when, when little girls say no, there's a tendency to say, oh, are you sure? No, it's okay. Go ahead and do this instead. And and it comes out, you know, like when you're saying goodbye to someone, oh, give X a kiss goodbye. And if, if a little girl says no, there's this inclination to say, oh, it's okay. It's okay. Just do it. Just do it. And I think right. the best thing that we can do as parents is to understand that even when our children are small, right. they have agency and giving them that agency early allows them to build the confidence in them, themselves that will be so important moving forward. And as they grow up, knowing that they have the ability to make choices for themselves is really going to change the way women approach the world. And we can start that as early as preschool, just All by right. respecting what they say. Absolutely. So Devin, give us a, a website where people can get more information from you. 
Yes, you can find us at hellbentmedia.com and we are on Twitter at hellbentpod and you can find me on Twitter at Devin Handy. And we have, a, like I said, a very uh, vibrant community on Facebook. We talk a lot. We share stories. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so you can <laughs> listen to us there. <laughs> All right, thanks for being on the show again and good luck to you. Okay, don't go anywhere. The holidays are right around the corner. Up next, we have great, easy, stress-free party tips you do not want to miss. We'll be right back. We are back. The holidays can be a happy and joyous time of the year. However, it can also be a stressful period for some people when it comes to planning festive gatherings. Here to help us diminish that stress is the founder of Party Host Helpers and National Lifestyle Expert, Renee Patrol. Hi, Renee. Hi, how, are how are you? you? This nice is to see you. amazing. It puts me right in the mood. Right? Right? Right for Thanksgiving. Right? If it doesn't put me in the mood, there's something wrong with exactly. me, right? Exactly. Yes, yes. How are you? I'm great. Thanks for having oh, me. Oh, it's a pleasure. Listen, the, the holidays are just around the corner, so we're going to get into talking a little bit of what you have here. Sure. But first of all, how did you get started with Party Host Helpers? Well, about, let's see, over 10 years ago, okay. I started an event planning firm, Events by Renee, local okay. here in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. And I kept having clients after I threw these huge elaborate weddings for them come back right. to me and say, I'm doing something small at my house. Uh -huh. Do you know a bartender? Do you know a server? Right. They always ask you those questions. Yeah. Right? And of course I had connections and people that like to work, but sure. I thought I could really make another business out of this. That's right. So five so years ago, off, the light bulb right? went off. <laughs> I remember it exactly, <laughs> Vividly, just right? like that. And five years ago, I launched Party Host Helpers, which was supposed to be just a smaller, you know, right. addition to Events by Renee, but now it flip-flopped. Right. And we're nationwide. Wow, uh, congratulations. In, thank you. Yeah, so we basically, we have wonderful people who mm -hmm. have hospitality experience right. and they come into your home they'll set up right. they'll serve they'll clean they'll bartend exactly what it says whatever you helpers need. They're, exactly. they're, they're, it's not the food right you're not providing the food no they're, food just the service just the service yeah so it's you know for me i used to host a lot of parties personally right, and i would wake right. up the next day and i would think, oh my gosh, I didn't even get to talk to my guests. I was doing dishes. <laughs> right, which is a common wine. thing, right? Right, absolutely. And I thought there's got to be other people like me out there. Absolutely. So ta-da, party host All right, helpers. so let's start with here what we have on the table. Let's start from yeah. here, and then we move on, <clears throat> on to the list. What do we got over here then? So if you are hosting Thanksgiving or any type okay. of fall dinner party this right. year, don't stress out. <laughs> right, <laughs> don't stress out, right? Um, a lot Easier of people, said than done, right? <laughs> right, well, a lot of people think that they have to go buy an elaborate floral centerpiece from right. their local florist. Okay. I use things that I already had. Okay. But I I started with this, um, and you can find this in craft stores, mm -hmm. just burlap. And the width okay. of it is exactly what you want it to be. Right. You can get just plain burlap. Mine has a little bit of glitter, some mm -hmm. sparkle, because I like to jazz it up a of little course, bit. Of course, of course. And then I took pumpkins that I had on my porch, little jack-o'-lanterns that I had yeah. just sitting around my home. Um, I had I bought this very affordably, and then these as well, and I bring them out every year. So I'm not this buying so them nice. each year, right? <laughs> and then I just pulled some votives together, things that I had around my dining room, okay. lit them up. Up, and then you see I have some, you know, fake leaves, fake or you leaves can use real leaves, send your kid out to the yard. <laughs> <laughs> so that's my centerpiece. So how's seating charts? I see, I see that you have yeah. seating charts here, right? How important is to have a seating chart? So I think it's important. Well, let me back up a little bit. Sure. Thanksgiving is a very um, casual day for guests, per se. Yes. Like, say yeah. you have a niece or nephew who's in college, right. and then their friend isn't going home for college. Right, so they right, call right, you right. and they're like, hey, Aunt Renee, I'm bringing a I'm guest. I'm bringing a guest, right? So it's important to make sure that you <laughs> Happened have- Happened plenty of times around my house. Yeah. Yes. So it's important to make sure you have a couple extra seats okay. for that for that exactly. But then place right. cards, if you like to be strategic about your seating. Mm -hmm. I don't know how, what your family dynamics are, but some people might not want Aunt Jo, Joan, right. sitting next to Uncle Joe down the table. So <laughs> right. we, you know. Clash. Right. And for place cards, they don't have to be fancy. You can right, see right. I put a little tag on an apple that I had anyway. That's right, that's right. I put right. a tag on a pumpkin and I made one. And you made one for me? Yeah. I can't believe you have my own name here. <laughs> so you can that's write adorable. on the pumpkin, you can add that. <laughs> yes. That's just basically, um, craft paper okay. that I bought at the at the craft store and then right. I just wrote your name there. So oh, that's amazing. I think that's really cute. Okay. I, I see a lot of candles here. Let's move a little more yeah, to the left. Yeah, sure. Candles. Uh, I see a lot of people at the restaurants especially using the, the fake candles. Yeah. Is that... 
I mean, it's your home. Light it up. Light it up, right? (laughs) I mean, it's some (laughs) venues and and restaurants. I guess it's a fire hazard, but I think this gives a nice glow. You know what I forgot, too, is that I can have you make me a quick centerpiece as well. If you just have a large cylinder base. You just take some pumpkins, right. throw them in. Throw I them like, in here? Yeah. Okay, let's I do like it. I like white, orange. Right. Beautiful. And then get a branch from maybe your garden or, right. again, something fake from the craft store and sure. pop it in there. Right. It looks good just like that. It looks like good that, just though. like that, right? Yeah. That's amazing. So, that is awesome. And uh, what do we have over here, Renee? We got some I made here. a really easy appetizer. So okay. it's apple brie crostini. So I got... A baguette, I cut right. it, I put a little brie on it, a right, little cheese, apple right. butter, mm-hmm. a slice of the apple that you have, throw them in the oven, and you right. look super fancy, and it's very easy. Very you can easy. drizzle some honey on top of there if you want. I already Ooh, made some. So you just take so, out the honey and just yeah, pour it right here, right? Easy. And yep. what is here over here? Just uh, So the, the, it's, oh. it's, that's it. Yeah, we made them ahead of time for you. It's the apple butter, the brie, and then a slice of apple. And wow. your party host helper can serve those and put them in and out of the oven as well. That's amazing. So that's yeah. amazing. So you're just you're, you're local here, or do you now you're going to be nationwide? We are correct? nationwide. We're in over 30 cities. So 30 cities. Most major cities, but yeah, in the tri-state area, okay. Delaware Valley, we have a ton of helpers, and Thanksgiving is specifically our busiest day of the year. So. Right. We have tons of helpers available to help you with your and Thanksgiving day. Is there a website where people can get all the information? Yeah, www.partyhosthelper.com. Party. And one more thing, then I sure. noticed that you have, you were a once named the queen of the scene. So <laughs> is, that, is that true? That is true. That is true. Well, yeah, you should, local you radio should be station. proud of they, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Go, that's great you know, to you hear. You have to be out and about. You have to be out and about. about. And also, you were a best filly in 2018, right? Yeah, so that was oh, exciting. Oh, God, that's amazing. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Of course. Thank all you. Right. Okay, guys, thanks to all of my guests for being here today, and thanks to all of you home for watching. Make sure you tune in next time for another wonderful show. Also, join me on social media at Araldo Maglara so our conversations can continue and I can know what topics and guests you would like to see right here on Unplugged with Araldo. See you next time. The preceding was sponsored by Fitness Training by Araldo Incorporated.